What's going on guys? Joe McCall here and uh, this is my open office hours. This is a call that I do where I'm just going to go in and start evaluating some vacant land deals. And so I've got a few of them submitted here that I'm going to review and kind of show you what I do and why I do it and kind of how I look at vacant land deals. And if I have time, I'm excited about this. I'm going to share some really cool new tips and tricks and hacks that we're using and my students are using right now to find land deals from realtors are you guys ready to jump in first of all if you want my i got a cool thing here for you brand new it's called a uh, strategy pdf I, I i worked really hard to come up with a creative name for it uh, but i did a nine page pdf report here of how i do all my vacant land deals and this is the entire strategy that me and my sons used to do over 150 grand flipping vacant land deals. Just me, these are deals that I did with my sons, teenage sons. And uh, you can get this PDF for free. It's just nine pages and it walks through step-by-step step how we do everything. It shows you the letter that we use, uh, the contracts that we use, the process for handling the incoming leads, the voicemail, how we make our offers. And um, you can make a lot of money with this thing. You can get it for free right now at strategypdf.com. Check it out, strategypdf.com, cool? This is a deal that was submitted uh, just recently from a guy named Ken. It's a property in Marion County, zip code 72644. And um, he says APNs are not supported in this area. Um, every county that I know of uses either parcel IDs or APNs. There has to be some code, but maybe there isn't. So these are two parcels. And... Um, one is three acres. I'm going to write these kinds of notes down here so you can see my notes later. Hold on. Let me make this a little bigger. Three acres times two. So a total of six acres, right? One is on the north of the road, and the second one is on the south side of the road. Interesting. So I would treat them as two separate lots is what I would do. Um, there is an address to locate. So he said, check out Grandma Rose's house. So I did a search for that and I came up with this. So this looks like a grandma house. Maybe that's what he's talking about. So this is kind of a, an address where the property is approximately, okay? So I'm gonna take this address, I'm gonna copy that and let's open it up in Redfin. Now it doesn't like that address, that's fine. Let's actually, let's put it here in Google Maps and there it gives me a different address. Let's copy that and let's put that into Redfin. There it is. That's much better, isn't it? So you can see we're kind of at the um, edge of this leg of the lake. Whoa. I want to get the general area of where this property is, and sometimes that's not easy to do, especially if I don't have GPS coordinates. Um, so I'm just going to assume, all right, this is maybe a good location. And... Um, Sometimes when you click on another nearby property, you click details. Oh, unknown address. Kind of striking out here. I just want to get, I just want to get um, a general location of where this property is. I'm just going to assume that is it. And let's zoom out so we can kind of see where. So it's kind of north central Arkansas, isn't it? North central Arkansas. Okay, um, three acres. So one of the first things I'd like to do is going from here in Redfin, I like to look at all of the other vacant land that's currently for sale. Let's look at my filters. I'm gonna do one to five acres. First thing I'm noticing is there's nothing to notice. There's no land comps which makes me a little nervous, right? Like you shouldn't be doing any marketing in counties where there are no comps. Very, very few comps. So what county is this again? This is um, Marion County, Arkansas. So let's look at Landwatch. I wanna show you, I talk about this all the time, right? If I go into Arkansas and I do a search because we just wanna deal with cheap, rural, recreational, vacant land so if I do all the properties under 150 grand, Marion County is nowhere on the top of this list. In fact, Marion County, 
Do you see Marion on here anywhere? Okay, there it is, 170. Um, yeah, it's you know it's it's in the upper half of the list, but when you're marketing, always you're just making your job harder when you are choosing a county to target that doesn't have a lot of activity because it's hard to find comps. It's almost impossible to find comps. And so what's funny is when I do these kinds of calls, I get the hard leads. People send me the hard leads because they're they're having a hard time finding comps for it. All right, so fair enough. I'll just tell you what I would do if I ever had a property in a hard to comp area. See, I'm not even getting any sold comps around here. So I'm gonna pass on this deal. Uh, and this is one of the reasons, this is important. Um, when you give a deal to a coach or somebody who's already maybe doing land deals and you say, hey, here's maybe a potential deal. Can you tell me what you think? What would you offer on this, right? It's really, really important that you do as much of the work as possible for whoever you're bringing this lead to. Now, no knock on Ken, um, but like if it was one of my coaching students who brought me a land deal and I didn't have any sold comps, I didn't have any active comps, I didn't have anything on here that tells me what they think I should offer or they should offer, um, I'm gonna give it back to them and say, don't waste my time. You do the work. Don't give me the stuff to do the work for you. Does that make sense? So this is really, really important to understand, especially if you're in a new market and you are, um, you have somebody who's mentoring you who's already doing deals, maybe not even a paid coaching relationship, but somebody that's already doing deals and you want them to look at your deals, you want to partner with them potentially on a deal. Really important, you don't give them your work to do for you. It's just like, you know, it's just kind of like a realtor that you ask, hey, will you bring me any deals? And they just bring you, uh, market properties that are already on the MLS. You know, no, 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 no. Um, do the work for them. So when you bring a lead or a deal to somebody to help you evaluate it, to look to see whether it's a good deal or not, do the work of giving them three sold comps, giving them active three active comps. Sort them, give them the three lowest sold comps, the three lowest active comps. Tell them what you think you should offer for the property. Tell them what you think you should sell it for do any kind of due diligence or research that needs to be done, give them the GPS coordinates, give them the parcel ID or the APN number. Does that make sense? And I, I harp on this all the time on previous calls. People submit leads for me to look at that don't even have the county that they're in. And that just makes everything so much harder for me. So um, I'm gonna not do any more work on this one. No offense, my brother Ken. All right, let's look at another new one. And this is from Jason. This is a county in um, Tennessee, Rowan County, Tennessee. And I got some GPS coordinates and I have a parcel. Looks like I have two parcel IDs, I think. They look the same. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's 10 acres. They say we should offer 35,000 for it and they think we could sell it for 65. How'd they come up with the ARV a combination of price? They talked to some realtors, nice, and they have they looked at some sold comps. Bam, I like it. What's the end goal of this deal? Make the most out of the deal, money, and maybe sell it with seller financing after I purchase it. Jason, you didn't give me any comps. If you were here listening to this, I'd, I'd wanna know why. Why didn't you give me any comps? But I'll show you maybe what I would do. There's a vacant lot. Let's kinda zoom out to see where it is. GPS coordinates are nice, again, cause I can just quickly go into Google Maps and see where it is. Okay, then I can also um, zoom out a little bit and I can drag this yellow dude around and see if there's any Google Street Views. So there's a Google Street View right there. It's kind of what the area looks like. This picture was taken in 2007. This is backwoods Tennessee, isn't it? So just knowing this tells me this is in an area that does not have many, if any, HOAs. Backwoods, Tennessee. Let's zoom in a little bit more to that area and drag the yellow dude around. And you can see we have there, let's go over here. Let's go to this road. This is the road that might take me to the property right there. You see that?
Some of these older, smaller county, these some of these smaller counties have older pictures, right? So this looks like the dirt road that takes me to my property. Again, this was uh, 16 years ago this picture was taken. So maybe a lot's changed since then. Let's drag this dude over here. Let's see what we got up there. I want to see what the road looks like that takes me there. So somebody who, I'm just looking at the the, the street views here, and this is telling me anybody who buys this lot um, is going to be buying it probably for um, just recreational use. Go camping, get off the grid, park an RV, go hunting. This isn't going to be like new home construction. Maybe they'll build a home on it, don't know. I'm just thinking, who is my buyer for this property? Now, knowing Tennessee, Rowan is a very popular county, right? So let's look at Landwatch real quick here. And I'm probably pronouncing Rowan wrong. Roan. All right, so we're at Tennessee properties under $150,000. You see that here? I scroll down. And Roan is number three. So that's good. I just know if I'm looking at this, I'm going to get comps, which is nice. Thank you very much, Jason. Appreciate that. All right, so I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to show you something. If I go back to this map view, oh, let me put the GPS coordinates back in there. All right, I need some addresses. So I want to look this property up on Google Maps. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to look this property up in uh, Redfin. So there's an address right there, 137 Paint Rock Trail. So if I copy and paste that address into something like Zillow, it will take me to that area, won't it? Boom. So it takes me here. I X out. And then from the map, I zoom out a little bit. And so my property is right at the end of this Paint Rock Trail. So my property. One of the things you need to look at, too, is there road access to this? Well, I don't know. Looking at a satellite view. Yeah, there's some kind of access. There's some kind of dirt road. What's the terrain like? Let's click on 3D. I want to make sure it's not on the side of a cliff, right? Zoom in. I'm going to hold the command key down and just kind of move it around here. So it looks pretty good. You know, if you had a, a lot of times you'll find these properties on the side of a slope, and that makes it just harder to sell. Not a deal killer, but you can see something's going on here. It de definitely has road access, I would bet. I'm just doing this all again, you know, in, in um, Google Maps. Okay, so going back here to this map, zoom out. So I'm kind of, you see this paint rock trail? I'm up above this road right here. So if I'm in Zillow, my property is right up in here. Sometimes if you zoom in, it's this one right here. You can click on the lot. If there's a number like this, you can get information on it. But So I'm that property right there, aren't I? Uh, let's do a latitude longitude search, okay? Takes me right in there. Boy, this is all new. I need to turn parcels on. There we go. And I click there. Now I can see who owns it on the left. A guy named Rick Gonzalez. Sometimes you scroll down. This is nice. It's actually a little easier to read. Oh, this says five acres. So maybe there's two lots that he, ah, okay, here we go. He owns this lot and he owns this lot. There's two lots that um, he owns that he's interested in selling. Good. Sometimes here on the left, we can see um, when he bought it. He bought it in 1997. Okay, 1997. And you can see where he lives. He lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, all right, so now here again at Zillow, I have that property and this property in the center of the map. And I'm going to do some, I want to see actives. First thing I want to look at, okay? I'm going to hit apply. So these are actives. I'm going to go to home type. I only want lots land. Click apply. And then more, I'm going to do some lot size parameters. I might do two to 10 acres. 
One of the nice things about Redfin is you can look up, there's more uh, better sizes to filter. Make sure days on Zillow are any when I'm looking at for sale. I'm just gonna start zooming out. And I'm gonna sort by price, low to high. And sometimes you need to remove boundary. Zoom out again. All right, here we go. This is my competition. I have five comps here. I'm gonna zoom out one more time. Now I have 69 comps. It's one of the frustrating things sometimes about this. Now you could do a draw and just kind of like draw everything here to see your comps. I'm gonna zoom in. It goes from five to 69 comps. So I see here, if I'm gonna sell my property, I better make sure I am the cheapest five acre lot. So I'm probably gonna to want to sell mine for $45,000. And, boy, I just wish I had more comps, huh? Let's zoom out one more time. All right, now I got 69, maybe this is fine, but some of these are near the lake. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to I'm going to scroll all the way down and I want to exclude all the expensive ones. So I'm going to exclude anything over $100,000. All right, so that's going to take away some of the properties that are on the water. Now I have 46 comps. Now I know you can't probably see this, but there is a tool called Pebble. If you go to Pebble REI, this is a CRM tool that is good. I don't use it, but... Um, He's got this comping tool that you can get for free. I recommend you check it out. Um, Jesse Kwong's a good guy. It's a good tool. I just don't use it. I like FreedomSoft better. Um, but you can put your name and email in here, and you get this free pricing tool. And what it does is it goes in and it scrapes sites like Zillow for comps. And if I click on this Pebble thing and click Save All, I just screenshotted it. You can see what I'm looking at here. You can see I have the median price per acre is 15,151. I'm writing this down here. I got actives of 15,151 per acre, right? And that's just showing of all the properties that are currently active for sale that's on this Zillow, they're active, the median is about 15 grand an acre, okay? Next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna switch to solds, apply, and I'm gonna go to more. I'm gonna do sold in the last six months. Apply, there's 29, that's good. And you can see I got a wide variety here, but here's one that's sold with something on it for 25 grand. This is my competition. All right, so I'm gonna do that scraper doohickey thing here again. And I'm, I'll show you another screenshot of what it looks like. All right, so that's what I have. And it scraped all of that property in the sold and puts it in here. And it gives me a median price per acre of 11875 per acre. So what I'm looking at here is um, I've got an active, from active comps, 15,151 an acre. And from sold comps, I have 11,875 an acre. So when you have two different numbers, I usually go with the lower one because we're always just gonna be conservative. You know, when you're making offers on vacant land, it's never an exact science. I wish it was, but you just don't get as many comps as you do uh, with houses. So this is kind of what I'm gonna do. Remember I have two five acre properties. So what I like to do then is let me make um, my offer here and I'll do it in green. So I'm gonna do five acres equals and let me do it over here okay one one eight seven five times five equals fifty nine three seventy five and then i want to div multiply that times twenty five percent so i'm going to offer then approximately is what i'm thinking i'm going to offer fourteen eight four four is what i'm going to offer for this property I'm going to try to sell it for maybe 59375 but remember going back to these comps here if I go back to actives now in Zillow remember when you're changing to actives you need to change days on Zillow to any that's very important 
And if I scroll down, my cheapest similar property is right here. Okay, now let's think about this. Why would somebody want to buy my property if I'm going to sell it based on that formula for $59,000? Why would somebody want to buy mine for $59,000 when they can buy this one for $39,000? That's a problem, isn't it? Maybe. All right, so I'm going to do something different here when I'm looking at my offer. I'm going to say, I'm going to sell mine for, I want to sell mine for 38000 I want to be, and I'm looking at this just as one five acre prop, property at a time. So I'm going to sell mine for $38,000, okay? Um, and then I just divide that by four or multiply it by 25%, right? And that's going to equal, let me get my calculator here, 38,000 divided by four, uh, that's going to equal 9,500. Okay, so now I have, I'm looking at, Two different offers, $9,500 and 1484 What would you do? 21500 That's what I'm going to offer. I would offer twenty one five, and then I will sell each one for thirty dollars to 35000 My goal when I list these properties is to sell them as quickly as possible. So back to this, again, looking at this thinking, well, okay, I'm going to sell it. I want to sell each one at uh, as cheap as possible, so I might list it for 35 k And uh, what, what else would I do, by the way? Once I get it under contract or I'm negotiating a little bit with the seller, I'm going to go here and look at solds. Let's go solds in the last 90 days. Here are 13 vacant lots that have sold recently. I'm going to call every single one of these realtors. Scott Wilson, there's a phone number. I'm going to call Scott. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Joe here. I'm an investor that buys and sells vacant land, and I see that you've recently sold a property in the Philadelphia, Tennessee area, and I am have another property that I'm thinking about buying and then turning around and selling it with owner financing, and I'm wondering if you would be interested in representing me and listing this property for me. Then you talk to them and you can get them to do things like this. Take drone footage, take really nice pictures, advertise the property for you. Cool. All right, let's go to the next deal. The next one is from Cecil. Let's see if I get any information here. Gonzales County, Texas. 0.18 acres near San Antonio. It's 0.18 acres. Here's the problem with Texas. You can't get comps. Gonzales County, Texas. Let's just remove the um, number of acres, home type vacant land, and let's do no men, to no maximum. And let's do, you can't get sold comps, right? Um, let's look at for sales though. So one of the things you have to think about more is then um, what, what are some active comps maybe you can look at. So if you're thinking about selling a 0.18 acre property, what are you gonna have to sell yours at? And sometimes you can only tell by looking at the actives. Let's see if I can get a zip code. 78629. All right. 78629. It's a big zip code. That's fine. I'm just going to put that zip code in the center of my map. I'm going to remove boundary. We're looking at vacant land only. And let's do a search. Let's do a little search here for lot size to be at least. Well, how many acres is... Um, 0.18 times 43,560. So it's 7,800 square feet is this property size. So let's do 5,000 to half acre, quarter acre. Sort low to high. In that zip code, there's only two active lots for sale that are about that size, one for 22, one for 39. 
So I don't have an address. I don't have a GPS location. I don't. There is a parcel ID. Let's do 500, 5,000 square feet to half an acre. Now I have six comps. These are active comps, right? So I'm going to do max price $100,000 just to get rid of the, the outliers. So here are, in this area, five for sale comps. I want to be the cheapest one, right? So what are these kind of selling for? I'm going to do that Pebble REI thing here. I know you can't see this. But they're selling for about $160,000 an acre. But these are little, these are smaller ones than that, right? So I'm just going to take $160,000 an acre times 0.18 acres. So I'm going to sell this for about $28,000 divided by four. So I'm going to offer tentatively $7,200. Just kind of looking here at the comps. Yeah, if I sell it for, if I buy it for $7,200, I could probably sell it for twenty. dollars I'm okay with that. So I would offer $7,200. Just remember this too. You cannot get sold comps from Texas. It's just a non-disclosure state. All right. That's what I would do. Now, you could also get, you can get decent sold comps from Texas priced and let me show you how to do that here for texas i'm gonna click right here price land and our county was gonzalez county right the thing that priced does is it scrapes constantly comps from redfin zillow realtor.com land.com and stuff like that so we're going to have to pick a minimum acre. Let's do 0.1 acre. Let's do maximum 0 0.5, 0 0.1 increment. So we're Gonzales County. And that's all I'm going to do. I just want to pull everybody that owns land out there. I'm going to click search. So it's looking in Gonzales County, the entire county. All the lots that size, there's 1,098 property records. And then what you see here are they have um, not very many comps. Okay, most counties in Texas have more comps. Again, you want to look at, let's go back here to Land Watch. I'm going to tip in Texas. We're looking for cheap land. Let's just click the word Texas. There we go. Cheap land under 150 grand in Texas. See these counties right here. You, If you're doing any kind of land investing, you only want to focus on the most popular counties. Now, Texas has 5 million counties. Let's see where Gonzales County is. They have 45 right there. Okay, so I'm scrolling up. Okay, so I'm looking at the entire state of Texas. This is landwatch.com, right? Click see more. Boom, here we go. Gonzales County is way down there there's gonzalez county right there 45 45 active listings scroll up you i why are you even targeting that county you get my point here you should be focusing only on the top 15 percent 25 percent of the counties in whatever state you're in because when you even go to priced you're not going to get any comps. Price normally has really, really good comps, but there's nothing to comp, so it makes it hard to price these properties. Again, another example of somebody, Cecil, who's giving me hard deals. I, I only get the hard ones to comp here. So I, based on the actives, though, I showed you what I did, would do. Just looking at the actives, I'd want to sell mine for 20 grand maybe. And so I would take 20,000 divided by four. So I would offer about five or $7,000 is what I would offer. One more here, and then I got a cool, some cool things to show you. All right, cool. Thank you, Jason. Jason gave me the county of his property. Cherokee County, North Carolina. And he gave me GPS coordinates. And he gave me the APN parcel ID number. Nice. It's one, one acre. 
Um, okay, so Jason here says he wants to offer $4,000 and he thinks he can sell it for $8,000. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying today's video and you want to get into land investing as soon as possible, I've got a free gift for you. If you click right here, I'd like to give you two land flipping documents that my two teenage sons and I have used to generate over $150,000 in profits flipping vacant land part-time on Facebook. You can do this part-time without having to talk to sellers, without using any of your own money. And it's one of the best ways to get started and succeed in real estate investing today. Just click right here if you'd like to get it for free. Otherwise, let's get back to the video. First thing off the bat is not low enough. You need to offer on that cheap of a property, you need to be offering 20, 25%. So, and your estimated profit is 3,500 bucks. Not enough. You need to offer less so you can make more profit than that. Does that make sense? Uh, so Cherokee County, let's look this property up. Uh, Cherokee County, North Carolina. I'll show you where it is. It's a good county. Let's look at Landwatch. North Carolina. There you go. Cherokee County is in the top. Nice. Good job, Jason. Thank you. Okay, um, so there's Cherokee County. I like it because it's a few hours from these big cities. It's a few, kind of in the middle of Knoxville, Chattanooga, Atlanta, Charlotte. It's in the Na Nantahala National Forest. Beautiful area out there, okay? Now I have the GPS coordinates. Let's check that out. Let's zoom out. I'm gonna do the uh, yellow street man. The only thing that's out here is maybe let's do the let's do the highway here. See what it looks like. Well, there you go. Let's get past this big berm. So this is the road you would take to get to the property, just to see what the area is like. This picture was taken September 2022. Okay, cool. One of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on one of these little houses you see here so I can get an address. I'm gonna right click on that, go what's here, and it doesn't tell me. So I'm gonna click on this one right here. What's here, and now it gave me an address right there. 834 Ranger Road. <clears throat> Let's do uh, Redfin this time. Okay, it brings me right there. Gonna zoom in a little bit. So now I know my property is in the center of this map. If I go back here, my property's at the edge of this Abigail, Abigail Road. There's Abigail Road right there, right? Okay, so my property is now in the center of this map. Let me look one more thing here. Sometimes you get a parcel on Google Maps, sometimes you don't. Um, let's look at MapRite real quick. And now it's called Land ID. I'm gonna need to do New Map, North Carolina. And I have an APN number. Let's see if this works. Search by parcel ID, Cherokee County, paste that APN. All right, so that's funny looking one right there. What am I looking at? Well, does it have road access? Maybe. Kind of hard to tell. Sometimes you can tell in here when you look at different map overlays. Base map. So you can change it to hex aerial. Yeah, I bet you it does. You can see kind of the shade on the trees there. Maybe it's a dirt road. I don't know. Let's Google Maps. I bet you it has road access. MB satellite, NAIP, whatever that is. Street view. All right, so probably has access right here from Flowers Road. So that's good. 
Never buy a property. Don't just don't waste your time on a property that does not have good, clear, simple road access. Just not worth it. So yeah, it's got access right here from Flower Road. One of the other things I want to do is look at the topo. Um, so I'm going to click on 3D. So this is obviously hilly. I was going to suspect that it was because that road was pretty windy. So I'm just going to hold my command key down and kind of, or control key and kind of navigate around. So remember our property is this one right here. So look at that. Hmm. Now, right here, this is a property, right? Not that it's a deal killer, but how much of it is buildable? It's pretty steep. That's, you know, it looks sometimes worse than it really is. <clears throat> so, again, sometimes it's better to just look at it on Google Maps for 3D. Click 3D here. And now let's zoom around. So it's steep, but nothing says you can't, you know, drive way up here, build a house up here or something. And we sell our land for so cheap. These are things that um, are just to be expected. But knowing that it's on a slope, when I'm talking to the real the, the homeowner, I'm going to ask them about that. Looking here on a map, it looks like it's very sloped. Uh, what's the story? Can you get to it easily? What do you, what do you think somebody who buys it is going to want to do with it? So they would probably, if somebody built on it, would build something right up here. And maybe it has good views because it's on the top of a hill. All right, so now we have this property here. It is, how many acres is it? 1.03 acres, nice, okay. Now what? Go to the Redfin, and I'm going to look at for sales. I want land only, and I want filters. Let's do half an acre to three acres. I could do two. Let's just see what we got. If I go half acre to two acres, let's see what we have. No results, but I'm going to zoom out. These are actives. I want to know what my competition is. Zoom out again. I'm going to sort this from low to high. I've got one. Zoom out again. Okay, now I've got 30 of them. This is good. So I got 30. I'm glad I did my filtering here for you know half acre to two acres. Got 30 properties. If you really were doing some more deeper analysis on this property, um, priced gives you a really good uh, analysis for um, what percent of the property is buildable. Make sense? Remember that pebble doohickey thing here? I know you can't see it. But to use it, you have to make sure on Redfin that you're on Photos, not Table, on Photos. And I'm going to click on that Pebble Doohickey, Clear All, Save All, and this is what you're going to see. It shows me that all those properties, it scraped 30 of them just with a few click, quick click of the button. And um, the average median price, I'm going to write this down, is 26442 now that's median. I like median because it kind of removes the outliers um, price per acre. Now if you wanted to, back here to Redfin, I've got some expensive ones in here maybe. No, I don't. It's not that bad. You could say, okay, maximum 50 grand. Okay, I'm going to do that pebble doohickey again. Clear all, save all. And it's about the same. It just went down a little bit. Uh, 25639. Then I'm going to switch from here. I'm going to switch to solds last six months. Sometimes also, if I don't have enough comps, I might go to the last year because I'm just looking for the cheapest comps I can find. And I'm okay with going back a year if it's going to give me some cheap comps. 28 homes, good. Priced, sort, low to high. I'm going to do that pebble doohickey here. And I'm going to get, looking at solds, 24477 an acre. So what am I looking at here? Our property is um, 1.03 acres. My active comps, 
brings me at about 25,639 an acre and my sold comps brings me to about 24,477 an acre. So if I got two numbers similar, I'm always going to go with the cheaper one. Cool. So just my initial calculation. I'm going to use this one, right? So I'm going to do 24,477 times 1.03 times 0.25 equals 24,477 times 1.03 times 0.25. I'm going to offer tentatively 6303. That's going to be my initial offer. What do I think I'm going to sell it for? Well, let's look. If I switch here to for sales, sorted low to high, mine's one acre, right? Well, look at this. Here's a one and a half acre for 16 grand. I'm going to sell my one acre for about $15,000. That's what I'm going to put it on the market. Okay. So then you take that times 25%. Now I'm going to offer 370.50. So now you've got, you've got kind of two different numbers, don't you? I got an offer for 6303 and an offer for 37.50. So which one do you do? You want to go for the lower one. Always, always take the lower offer. So this is what I'm going to offer. I'm going to offer 37.50. That's my final answer. That's what I would offer for the property. Now you said estimated sale price eight grand. I think you could sell it for 15 grand. I think you'd be good. All again, I'm looking at the comps. I want to be the most competitive, the cheapest one, especially if you're offering seller financing, you'll get more potential buyers. Now the slope is another issue too, right? In fact, let me see if I can, if I go to priced, you can do what's called a comp report. And I'll show you what this looks like because it's going to give you a um, PDF summary of all the comps and this, uh, a summary of the slope and if, there's, if they think there's road coverage or not on it. Boom, here we go. It downloaded it. The assessed value is 10 grand. They have different pricing models. So based on the county price, it's about, they think it's worth about 22 grand. And I say you should sell it for maybe 15. Based on the Murphy City price, it's worth about 16,600. Geo-adjusted, it's worth about 19. Geo-adjusted is just their kind of like an algorithm. So they're suggesting you sell it for about 19,300, which is close. I was saying you should sell it for 15 grand. They give you some sold comps here. Here's the for sale comps. And this is if you wanted to dig into it, you can kind of see these are some similar properties nearby that are currently listed for sale. Here's a one acre property on Lands of America. You notice I didn't see this on Redfin, did I? This one's for sale for 12,500. This might be the same property. This is interesting because there's Flowers Road right there. And now it's off market. So whoever this was might have found a seller who had this property Maybe they tried to sell it themselves. Okay, so it was listed with an agent for 12500 This is interesting. I bet you this is the same property. They tried to sell it for 12500 and maybe could not sell it before. And here's some pictures. Yeah, I remember it's on a slope. So here's the thing to think about. Um, any property can sell at the right price for the most part. I bet you that's the same. So now I'm looking at this thinking, ah, wait a second here. This is why, again, we give ourselves three months for due diligence on our properties because it gives us time to see whether we can find a buyer or not. And after you get it under contract, let's say, and then you realize, man, I'm not getting any calls on this. You can go back to the seller and renegotiate a lower price. So looking at this, I would probably sell mine for $99.50. That would be my sale price. So times 25%, I would probably offer $24.88. I would offer about $24.88, maybe $2,500. And I would sell it with owner financing, which would make it probably easier to find a buyer. If this guy couldn't sell it at $12,500, it'd be a little easier, right? Here's the same property on... 
Realtor.com. You can see pictures here. Yeah, this is the same property in Realtor.com. And this shows it was off market. If you look at this comp report, oh shoot, I gotta go back to see it. So it was listed uh, April 2022, a year ago. So maybe they tried selling it a year ago. All right, but one good thing is you see some older, uh, some bigger comps for good pricing. Let's look at this one here. Sold comps. This one sold for 10 grand, uh, one acre. It's a half mile away. Let's look at Zillow. So this is an older listing. It sold... Um, October 22. Well, it's only five or six months old. That's a good sign. Um, if it was listed with an agent, you would find the realtor information here and you could contact the realtor. All right, I got a few more things I want to show you on this comp report because it's really valuable. Uh, let's go. These are sold comps here. Slope overview. Look at this. So it tells you the minimum slope on this property is 3%. The maximum is 25%. That's a lot. So total buildable area is still 26%. So 26% of the lot is flat enough to build on it, which is a good sign. Okay, you can see 0% of the property is flat. 9.7% has a gentle slope. 65% of the property has a steep slope. Not a deal killer, but this helps you kind of realize that. That's nice to have. Gives you a septic breakdown. Here's a road coverage. All right, so this is the other thing I like to look at. This is the offer price appendix. From this comp report, I rely on this offer price index if I can't find comps on Redfin or Zillow, sold comps. Um, and this is gonna kinda just get me ballpark. And basically, it has three columns, county offer, city offer, and geo-adjusted price. And you wanna be at about the 25 to 35% range. And I'm just looking at these numbers right here, okay? And whichever one is least, that's what I'm going to go and offer on. So this one says I would offer about $41.49, which is about $1,600 more than what I figured on the other thing. But it's going to get you ballpark. If anything, let's say you get you make an offer for $4,100, they accept it, and you figure that you sell it for $9,900, you pay a realtor um, $1,000, $89. You have some closing costs of $1,079. You're still going to make, you know, $3,500 wholesale profit on this deal. Not bad. All right, that is it. Uh, appreciate you guys. We'll see you. Take care. Remember, also, if you want my strategy PDF, go to strategypdf.com, strategypdf.com. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching these videos. If you like my channel at all, please hit the subscribe button. Get the notification bell thing clicked so you can get notified when new videos come out. Really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Comment down below, all right? Thank you.